The kick of your track is one of the most important parts of your track. And if you get it wrong, your kick may end up sounding weak or it could end up sounding a bit crowded in the low end. And you can end up going from a track that sounds like this. To an amazing track that sounds like this. For you to make your song sound better, I'm going to show you the five most common mistakes that I see people making when it comes to kicks. Let's go down to Ableton and let's get started with this tutorial. So we're here in Ableton and we're going to start by listening to the original song as it is. This is a song that I've done by myself. And the first issue that I see most producers doing when using their kicks is having a kick that is too short. And the example is this one over here. This is the exact same kick as the one above at the same level, but it's just 1 16th shorter, as you can see it over here. However, that punchiness over here of the kick comes from that sub that you have in the kick. And if you take that off, it's going to make your kick a little bit weak and your low end is going to sound a little bit powerless as well just so you can listen to the song again with a fuller kick. A kick that is too short is a kick that is normally below 1 16th. And normally I recommend your kicks to be a bit bigger than this. So this way it has enough time for the sub to come through. However, how can you save a kick that is too short? And honestly, you can save it with saturation or compression. But my recommendation to you is actually just go find a new kick in a sample pack because it's going to be easier. It's going to sound better. Or you can extract kicks from tracks that you like. As you can see it over here in the top right corner in a video that I've done in the past where I show you how to extract kicks from the songs that you love. In any case, choose a kick that is longer than 1 16th because it's going to have a bit more sub and it's going to sound a bit more punchy in your song as the one above. The other issue that I see most producers doing is when they have a kick that is too long. And I can give you an example with this one over here. You can see that this kick is a lot longer than the original kick. And the issue that you have when you have a longer kick is that it's not going to leave enough space for your bass. And this is going to end up sounding either crowded or the bass is not going to be present enough in the song for it to be noticed. So that's why I recommend you to make a shorter kick. And a way to fix a long kick, you can do it with either just fade. So you can come over here, cut the bass that you have and just create a fade and that's it. Or you can use any volume shaper tool like Volume Shaper, LFO2, or the free option called Flux Mini 2 by Kalem Audio, available below. And you have to just do something like this. You shape it for a kick, and it's going to sound a bit better. Without. It sounds a bit more controlled, it sounds a bit more tamed, and it has more space for the sub, essentially all this space for the sh sub to shine through. And that's the best scenario. But Leo, I want to have a long kick. I don't care what you're saying. Well, if you want to have a long kick, my recommendation to you is go to your sub channel and do something like this to your sidechain. So it fits exactly the kick that you have. For example, however, again, you're not leaving enough space for your sub to shine through. And the recommendation is always to make your kick smaller rather than your sub smaller, like it's what happening over here. But let's go to issue number three. And one of the main issues that I see producers doing is that they don't EQ the kick properly. The problem with not EQing the kick properly is that it can end up sounding a bit muffled or a bit overpowering in the song. Just for example, listen to this kick and listen to the original kick that I had. Now the new kick. The problem is that it doesn't have enough low end as the original and it has too much attack comparing to the original. So how can we fix this? Normally, the way to fix EQ is with an EQ and you can use any EQ for that. 
what I recommend you to do is go and listen to your kick so you can get the main frequency of the kick. This kick is in G, so it's 49 hertz. We're going to do a boost over here in 49 hertz, exactly in the kick region. And we're going to lower this in 3.5 dB so we can compensate for what we're boosting. Now let's listen in context. Without. Maybe I miss a little bit of the attack right now, so I'm going to push it a little bit. But again, without it. And with it. It has less attack, it has more punch in the low end, and it sounds a lot better comparing to the mix that we had. But now let's go to point number four. And point number four is that you have to find the best frequency range for your kick. Normally, I like kicks that play within G till A. But let's listen to how it sounds when you have a kick that is in B. I have the same kick with the same processing, but in B. And let's listen to how it sounds like. This is in G. And this is in B. G again. B. Can you see how it sounds a bit better in G? Not only it sounds better, but it sounds fuller in the low end also. And that's because that frequency range is a bit better for kicks. Normally what I've been seeing is kicks within F till A sharp is something that I see a lot in tracks. But I personally like to focus my kick within G till A. But Leo, what about the key of the track? What if the track is in E? Well, not necessarily you have to put the kick in the same key of your track. So let's say that your song is in F minor. So what I would recommend you to do is try to find a kick within G or G sharp, notes that are within the scale of F minor for you to put your kick into it. And let's go to the last point of this video, which is volume. Volume is crucial. If you don't have the volume right, anything that I've said before is gonna be wasted. So listen to the same kick as we're using over here, but we're gonna put it 6 dB quieter. And it sounds empty down there, right? Again, comparing to what we had. 6 dB quieter. Having the kick in the wrong volume can ruin everything that you do. It can ruin the frequency, the length, everything, because volume is essentially what is going to place the kick in the right spot of the song. And the best way to do it, as you may have seen the previous video that I've posted, is to use a reference track, match your song to it, and then you can compare how loud it is comparing to the reference track. Let's do a quick recap of what we've seen in the previous video. You're going to pick a reference track as this one that I have over here. You're going to match the loudness of the reference track and the loudness of your song. It seems about right. Now you're going to pick a spectrum analyzer and I'm using Ableton spectrum analyzer. But if you want to use span, essentially the thing that I recommend you to do is use these settings over here because they're going to look exactly like the ones in Ableton. And you're going to listen to the kick in the reference track and it sounds over here. You can see that the kick is being played at minus 19 dB. So essentially the kick that we have at the moment is playing at minus 24. So let's raise it a bit. Let's raise in 4 dB. 5 possibly. Now we are at minus 19 as the reference track. And if we listen to both tracks, since they are matched in terms of loudness, essentially you can do a quick fix in your kick this way. Again, how it was and how it is. A lot better, a lot more present. And you can see that having the kick that is more present in your song is going to make your sound sound much fuller in the low end and a lot more present in the low end as well. And that's it. I hope you liked the video. And let me know in the comments if you like videos like this. And if you want to see more tips and tricks like this one, leave a comment over here in the comments below. And I hope to see you in the next abstract video next week. Ciao.